Well, good morning, guys and girls. My name's Mikey, and welcome to another episode of Draw with Mikey, episode 63. So, all right, guys, how are you all doing? For those of you not in the know, this is that super casual midweek series where we talk about whatever, spoiler alert, swear word alert, it's really rough and raw and unedited, um, and it's kind of just my opportunity to read through the comments and see what's going along with you guys. But first things first, let's talk about that tablet competition giveaway because it was such a big uh, deal a couple of weeks ago on the channel. Um, firstly, it is first thing in the morning again. This is one of those episodes that I'm recording before work to just fit things in and uh, get bits out of the way and make sure this upload doesn't run late. Uh, and in that tablet giveaway competition, uh, I did... Uh, quite clearly say that the winners would be announced uh, back on the Monday, which was last Monday, which they were indeed. So I noticed a few comments where people were like, oh, when are people getting picked? And I'm just like, well, exactly when I said they were. So I uploaded a video last Monday and at the very beginning of the video, I mentioned that the winners would be announced in that one. So if you're curious, check out the uh, last sketchbook time lapse video I uploaded. Winners are there. I've heard back from one of the winners so far. Excellent. Well done. Still waiting to hear back from the other two. You guys have until Monday of next week to get in touch so that I can sort out getting those tablets sent out to you. Um, and yeah, it was like uh, kind of really awesome because I really liked the opportunity to start doing a giveaway on the channel, giving away some tablets to you sweet people in conjunction with uh, that GearBest website, which is cool. Um, but it also absolutely hijacked the format of the DWM series as well, which I didn't quite think out. Um, it was like a last minute opportunity, so I had to go into that video and I was like, nah, sod it, let's do a giveaway. Um, but it also means because what I like to do in this series is read through your comments and see what's going on, obviously. And sometimes there's between like 60 to 160 comments and I get to just catch up with you lovely lot. Uh, in the competition, uh, episode of that DWM there's like over 2700 comments <laughs> like there's no way I'm going to be able to filter through all of those to the ones which aren't competition entries to actually uh, catch on so consider this episode a bit like a slight hard reset I'm going to have a little scroll through see if I can catch uh, anything that's going on with you guys but as a result this particular episode will probably be a little bit shorter as we make our way through most importantly I've literally just gotten up just made myself a coffee because I've realised we've got to get this out of the way this morning. Let's have a sip. And let's have like a really loose scroll through the comments. So I might just kind of um, ramble on a little bit myself to fill in the gaps or basically talk about what's going on. Uh, Alex Gray says, when are the people getting picked? Are you still waiting till the 24th? The 24th, good sir. It was last Monday. I pretty much just explained it, but I'll let it go because it's a comment from the past. And uh, let's have a look down. Now, Thanks to all of your comments, by the way. I am still uh, watching My Hero Academia, uh, Boku no Hero Academia, in uh, some of my lunch breaks at work, grabbing it on the telephone. And uh, yeah, it's all right so far. I'm only about four episodes deep, so I've just gotten to the bit where um, he's gone to the academy and they've just started their very first test run where they're test fighting um, some various robots. I'm literally like halfway through an episode there. And um, I'm pretty sure like there's a girl who can make objects float into the air or she can control gravity or something. And I think he's like just about to man up and go and save her because everybody's lacking points. So we're getting there with that. I really quite like the idea that somebody had of doing... Um... Oh shit, what's the... <laughs> this is the other danger of doing an episode first thing in the morning. What's that main character's is All Might. There we go. I've got it. Um, somebody suggested doing an All Might piece of fan art, like a gender swap or something like that. Quite sorely tempted. Um, but uh, somebody got in touch with me to do a particular, um, or to use their song, I should say, in a fan art drawing video for this weekend, which I'm hopefully going to do. I'm not sure if it's going to be a fan art or a tutorial. Um, but their song was like really nicely produced. And sometimes you guys get in touch and are just like, oh, um, we do like non-copyrighted music on our channel, come use some of your songs and stuff, which is excellent because I always love getting suggestions, so don't ever be shy about that and I might get in touch and use some of your tunes on some of the videos. Um, but this other song I really like, so I want to get a character out of the way for that if I can just squeeze in that time. And part of recording this in the morning is just so I can make that happen. Uh, so here's a comment that doesn't look like an entry. Snow Blind Otter says, Hey Mikey, hello Snow Blind Otter. I have to ask, how do you manage to record these things on your phone? I've been told a few times that people would love to see how I do some of my better drawings via a time lapse or a live stream, but because I'm stuck with traditional art, I have no idea how to record it. I've tried using some Google Foo, but I didn't come up with anything concrete. So what kind of advice could you give me to get started with that myself? Uh, yeah, 
it's been a while since we've talked about my setup. I've mentioned this before, and it's it's still as low tech as it was. It's on the cusp of maybe getting slightly better with the camera. But uh, what I do, I mean, right now, um, I'm just filling in the sketchbook. That's the other part of this series, is that um, maybe you guys are getting on with your own artwork or your own projects in the background. And I'm basically just doing the same myself, or practicing, or just sketching any old crap, or filling in a page just to have drawn something for at some point in the middle of a week it's not really a, a midweek series that comes out with final art or anything like that sometimes there are some pictures that look better than others but mostly it's just like scribbling down thoughts and ideas in the sketchbook and you guys joining along and uh just recently i was practicing um more hips and thighs really just the shape and the form of like the hips on the torso so i was just kind of uh, inking out a few of those and giving them a cheeky bit of a colour in at the end, although the colouring's not so great. Um, but uh, basically this stage of it, where you can see me uh, with this top-down view over the sketchbook, what I do is uh, I have literally got one coat hanger, um, like a flat plastic coat hanger, and it's taped to the wall behind my monitor, just flat against the wall, so that it's like a hook. And then I get another coat hanger, and this coat hanger, I hope this description works, um, sits flat like to the floor the plane of the floor over my monitor and the end of the coat hanger hooks into the coat hanger in the wall and it basically acts like a lever over the top of a monitor the top of a monitor being like the fulcrum and it just sticks out over the desk and because it's basically just a bit of plastic shape that sticks out over the desk and floats at monitor height i just lay my uh, phone flat on there and just set it to record aiming down over the desk over at my page so that's what i've been doing like for i mean the coat hangers have changed over time and how the coat hangers are angled and position has been modified because i'm a professional uh, but other than that that's like been my setup for the last three years of drawing on youtube um i do have like an actual slightly better camera like a canon gx7 mark ii something like this um which in the last tutorial video uh, i've just had a go at putting that in <laughs> this sounds not so good putting that in the coat hanger instead um the problem is, is my phone makes a beep when it runs out of recording time and the camera doesn't, or at least I haven't found how to set it. So um, you run the risk of continuing to draw when it's not actually being recorded because you kind of get lost in the flow a bit. Um, and I'm still kind of working out how to light that without too much glare from a lamp. So I'm always moving this lamp around trying to avoid uh, glare. But you do need the lamp so that it looks nice and bright. Um, otherwise, it gets really, the image gets too dark and kind of orange tone. It doesn't look so great. So that's what's going on with my setup, Snowblind Otter. Thank you very much for asking a question. Let's have a quick scroll. Loads of you guys in a competition, especially at the top, are just like, when are you announcing the winners? Exactly when I said I was in a video. I've got no guilt over that. You guys know where it was. Hmm. Jericho Cross 97 says, hey, Mikey. Hello, Jericho Cross. Can you judge my fan art for Abigail Misty Briatton from COD bo 2 Zombies. It's my channel picture. Sorry, I'm not so good on the digital. Jericho Cross, because that's not a bump half this competition entry. Of course, all of those entries are welcome. Just not appropriate for this episode. I'll have a look. Um, I can just about make out a figure holding a gun in a pretty good pose. But that's about as deep as I can see. Well done, Jericho. Keep up the good work. Let's have a little scroll down. Oh, this... It's all bump up on this episode. This is exactly when that competition started kicking off. I was just thinking, brilliant, I'm doing a competition. I get to give stuff away. What the fuck am I going to do about the next TWM episode? Oh, here we go. Uh, Meandy TV says, uh, I don't think that writers made uh, Jamie, uh, Jamie an asshole in the beginning of Game of Thrones unintentionally. Oh, yeah, we were talking about um, Game of Thrones, what they were doing of character arcs uh, in the beginning of the show versus the books and like how... Some of the stuff at the beginning of the show might not have been not particularly thought out, but let's see what you've got to say. I don't think that writers made Jamie an asshole in the beginning of Game of Thrones unintentionally. Many bad characters developed and became good characters as seasons passed. That happened with Theon Greyjoy when he lost his balls. It makes us empathise with the bad guys as well and grow more attached to the character. Something similar happened with the Hound. He was kind of a bad guy in season one and two, but now he's a good guy. Grumpy as hell, but good. Meandy TV, I both agree and disagree. In that, yes. Game of Thrones is an incredibly well-written series of books that kind of give you the idea that there's no good or bad characters. There are just characters, um, some of which might do more good than bad and vice versa or change halfway through the series. Yeah, sure, it's all um, actions and consequences and so on and human beings which lead grey and complicated lives. Down with that. However, in the books, um, 
Jamie Lannister certainly becomes a much better person. He does grow with a character arc uh, where he learns to just like come away from his sister a bit and value himself a lot more and sort of like regain his old concepts of honor for his interactions with Brienne. Absolutely. But even before meeting with Brienne, he was a bit more of like a gallant, like top end knight who's incredibly like 1%, top 1% rich, but also deeply misunderstood and marred by um, being called the Kingslayer from uh, the days of Ned Stark. Like Ned Stark was actually a real fucker to Jamie before Jamie was a fucker to Ned Stark. Um, and that does not come out in the TV series at all because uh, Jamie Lannister comes across as an absolute prick, but it comes out in the books as they go on. Like, Ned Stark is the one that gave Jamie the title of Kingslayer and fucked for the rest of Jamie's life. And Jamie's life was fucked because of um, Ares Targaryen, the Mad King. All he wanted to do was be with his sister um, because they both got fucked over back when um, the Mad King married Rhaegar over uh, to the Dornish princess and said, it's really fucked up stuff. And basically, in the books, uh, yeah, he's a prick and he's a uh, Lannister, which doesn't help. Uh, but he never murders his fucking cousin. And in the books, because he's quite clearly portrayed as a bad character, you don't get his viewpoint in the beginning. This was back when the writers were writing season one of a TV show. And that's when the writers were just like, oh, we can make Jamie do something as dark and fucked up as kill his cousin because Jamie's a bad guy. So it was, as far as I'm concerned, or my interpretation of it, a misinterpretation of what that character was going to be about by the writers of the tv show so they added in their own extra bit about making him kill like one of his distant relatives to cause discord um in the camp where he's held captive whereas book jamie i'm not sure if he actually would have done that whatsoever because in book jamie um as well as him coming around a bit we just discover through relearning about the history that our assumptions of him as a reader have been skewed by the viewpoints we read through him in the earlier chapters Whereas in the TV show, they have to just completely turn his character around because they started off a little bit darker than I think Jamie really was. Um, so yeah, good point. But um, I'm only about 50% with you because I think the writers of the show just uh, don't have what it takes. And I'm not saying like I could. Um, and I'm not saying that's like necessarily a problem because they're still making an exciting Game of Thrones show. But they don't have what it takes to translate what G-I-R, G-R-R, G-I-R, gear. What George R. R. Martin was creating from the books onto the um, television without his input or his help, to be honest. And obviously now it's a completely different type of uh, series than it used to be, unfortunately. Hmm. Sip of Gobby. And UQB says, Dragon Ball Super isn't as bad as Dragon Ball Evolution. Super is like shooting yourself in the foot for like $145.46. It starts out stupid. And the stupid doesn't die down, but now you have enough money to go get a special edition of a game. While evolution is like being shot by a whole army in a line at the same time and not dying, but never having the pain go down as time passes for 30 cents, only to trip and die. Uh, neither is spectacular, but one isn't as bad as the other. Oh, so Dragon Ball Super, I heard, um, was, yeah, a bit stupid, but like kind of okay i'm pretty sure this is a one where they have blue hair now jesus i'm out of touch so uh dragon ball evolution is fucking terrible that film is absolute fucking garbage dragon ball evolution is definitely the worst like there is definitely a hierarchy uqb dragon ball evolution is at the bottom fucking hell what a bad film um but yeah in terms of that i might have to give it a catch-up of just seeing what's going on in the world of Dragon Ball and actually getting involved back with that. Again, big fan of uh, the cartoon, uh, the actual original Dragon Ball cartoon of young Goku, and it grows into the later tournament arcs where he's suddenly an adult and then it kicks into the... Uh, is it the first, like, Vegeta um, Frieza arc? That's, for, like, the main big one that kind of kicks off. So, yeah, and by then it's Dragon Ball Z. So, yeah, I've got time for that. I haven't read all the way through Dragon Ball Z. I've read just most of Dragon Ball and watched most of it. Uh, but we'll get there. That's a really enjoyable comic. Uh, Timmy G316 says, Hi, Mikey. Hello, Timmy. I need some advice. I tend to have a very heavy hand when I draw because I do bodybuilding. I've gotten lighter by using mechanical pencils, which break if I push too hard. But my question is this. Which do you think might be better for me, soft or hard lead? Soft lead gets darker lines easier, so I might not push so hard. But hard lead gives lighter, neater lines. I hope you see this. Well, Timmy G316, how convenient. I hope you've watched my last tutorial video on how you can get professional slick line work just by using one pencil. It's all about you 
and uh, your skills using a pencil because you can use like a 2B or a HB and you can actually work really dark lines and really light construction into there as well. Both of those things are genuinely options. Um, although it's really, really nice to have a full range of pencil leads and sets, absolutely. Um, but the pencils are going to um, kind of produce different weights and textures on the surface based on how you use them still. It's not a default answer that you're going to get out of them. So I do suggest like learn to be a bit subtle with your strokes, learn to be a bit lighter, a bit looser. And uh, yeah, like stuff that helps you stop leaning too hard is move your fingers back up the length of a pencil, have your hand at more of an angle on a paper so that the pencil makes longer, wider looser sweeping gestures and you'll be able to do that lighter but that's all in the video so i suggest have a look at that tutorial if you get the opportunity if you haven't already um let's have a little further scroll down here hey mikey it's been a while since ripper 92 hello there ripper 92 how are you doing have you ever watched a series called mr robot it's really good in my opinion yeah i've watched mr robot uh did I like it? Yeah, I did really like it actually. What? Um, trying to remember because I remember season two. A sip of coffee. What about season one? What was it? Oh yeah, okay. So Mr. Robot. Um, in the seasons. Uh, is this going to be a spoiler alert? No. Normally I just put a massive spoiler alert on everything, but I won't for this one. Um, Mr. Robot season one has this kind of twist which. Yeah, you see coming, and I'm pretty sure everybody on the internet knows about it already because they keep mentioning another film in relation to Mr. Robot. Mr. Robot um, uh, references this film quite a lot, even with a particular song at the end. So you're just like, okay, they've done this. And I really enjoyed that, so that was really cool. Season two, I was just like, uh, it's the difficult second album. You know what I mean? I, I don't know if I'm really into this anymore. Of course, they were going to make season two quite quickly off the back of season one because it's so popular. Um... But the twist that they have in season two about his perceptions of reality, I was just like, oh, damn, son, shit. So I was really pleased with that because the twist in season one, I saw coming about halfway through. Like, I wasn't 100% sure, but I was like imagining the narrative with that being the result, which I still enjoyed nonetheless. It's just the nature of um, a kind of a more clued in uh, kind of. Uh, critical viewing society I guess we've got these days the days of early M. Night Shyamalan films are gone now we're always looking for the twist and the subtle things in the plot as a viewing audience uh, but the one in the second season I never saw coming I was just like oh that makes so much more sense about how slightly odd everything was for the entire series so I did like it again um, but only really the stuff with I forget his name now the main character like in the second season all the bits of it, his sister and the rest of the uh, um anarchy i forget what i called the anarchy crew are up to um like occupying new york and stuff i was just kind of like uh, fine i don't really care what you get up to in your spare time i don't care how you're breaking into a house and you're all just living off cheese i don't don't know what they did i can't really remember but yeah like um there's a kind of bit of fallout and obviously his relationship with uh the guy who is becoming the head of e corp or something like that and i just yeah I, did, I wasn't bothered too much there but no i did feel very positively about the seasons overall it was a good watch good sir i do agree with that at the very least um what's going on let's have a look more of a scroll through things elite ghost kills what are you saying bruv uh oh my god you've done an essay but it doesn't have a bumper harvest link on it so i will have a look uh yo wakey i wanted to ask what's your favorite series manga anime comics tv shows anything really oh god that's a massive question um some of my favourites that I'm currently reading have read are Tokyo Ghoul, Tokyo Ghoul Reaver Breaker, The Breaker, New Waves, Aman, Ama, <laughs> how do you read for this? Ama to Inazuma, these two are Korean ones, God of High School and Helper. Uh, some I would recommend would be uh, Tuaru Osan no Vromo Katsudoki, or Katsudoki, and Is It Wrong to Pick Up Girls in a Dungeon, aka Danmachi, and Mob Psycho 100. This is made by the same person who made One Punch Man, and I also recommend the others I've talked about. Well, Elite Ghost Kills, I've read halfway through your two-paragraph comment. Thank you very much for all of these suggestions. Suggestions are always welcome, because I like to steal them and use them and read things, and it's great. Tokyo Ghoul, I have heard of, but I have not watched. It's about a kid who's half ghoul, half person in a world where there are people and ghouls. Um, so that's been recommended a lot, because I think people wanted me to do like either a gender swap or some fan art about something like that. Pretty much every other one that you've mentioned after that, I've not actually known. I'm just going to... 
type in helper as in H-E-L-L-P-E-R. Just as a random example, just to see what the theme is. Ooh, very dark artwork, very particular style. That one looks interesting already, already just because it's so graphically, visually distinct to look at. Mm, thank you for that suggestion. By that alone, I will be copy-pasting your other suggestions, good sir, and having a look at them later. Nice one. Good work, sir. Mob Psycho 100, I, of course, am familiar with. I've watched a few episodes. Um, it's fine. It's quite good. Uh, but uh, what was it? So I've talked about this before, I think. And it's kind of like, I can't quite remember what my thinking was. Go back like eight episodes and I'll talk about it. But um, I'm trying to, A, time is always an issue, but I'm not going to bitch about that like usual. Uh, but I'm trying to kind of like drip feed myself in for like certain types of anime. So Mob Psycho 100 is like, obviously it's the superpowers, but it's probably also very funny and it's got these um, clever undertones. I'm still doing that with One Punch Man. So I'm going to work through One Punch Man before I go to Mob Psycho 100 because it's rare that I find stuff like that but I find just genuinely hilarious like uh uh Cromarty High School I don't know if you guys have ever watched this it's just I don't even know why I love that so much it's just so fucking weird um yeah but before One Punch Man which is just I found laugh out loud funny in some bits and that's like as an older cynical guy that's actually much more rare for me than I think it is for other people but One Punch Man was so good and the, in the manga I keep reading the manga from time to time still at work and there is still stuff in a manga where I'm borderline laughing out loud at work because just the way he just delivers stuff is so fucking good um <laughs> but even think about it if you guys are up to date of uh, opm just for a bit where um uh spoiler alert where like is it sergeant uh gorilla or colonel gorilla one of the monsters is marching around town and he comes across armored gorilla from really early on in one punch man and he just has a go at him at following the corporate system made by humans and it's just a picture of armored gorilla and he's just like got this blank face and he's just like oh well man i don't know what to say about that and it's just the way it's done is so fucking good like it's really genuinely so pleased that that manga exists um but because of that, I want to just enjoy that, soak it up before I do like Mob Psycho 100. Hopefully that's going to be just as good. Um, but I want to just like pace it out. So I've always got something that really just tickles me uh, to have a read through instead of burning through it all at once. Um, because I do tend to burn series like probably at least half of the population like to do as well. Um, so those other suggestions are all going on lists. Elite Ghost Kills, thank you. But you mentioned some other things in this extra long ass comment, which I'm kind of speed reading through and it's about you having a hard time with poses against certain characters and action stuff like with goku and in powering up form uh drawing muscles correctly and proportionately is one of your things uh, so yeah i'll be doing that in a tutorial in, in for blue bloody hell i'll be doing that in a tutorial in future in terms of uh, proportioning out your muscles and fighting characters a bit like we've done for the female tutorials so we will get there thighs bums and breasts for the girls and other things or maybe for the guys you mean as uh, either's fine uh, except for the breasts, uh, but we'll see how we go. So yeah, I will have a go. And you've also linked to your deviant art. I'll take a look in a while. Thank you very much. What I'm going to do is copy C all of your comments, and then this is again an example of how casual the midweek series is. It's the only way I can make it almost weekly because sometimes we miss episodes, like we did last week. There wasn't one then because I had to go through all of your entries and then. Uh, like get most of them out of the way and then go through all of them again on Monday to catch all of the ones that I'd missed or were entered a bit later to uh, announce the winners to that competition. But I've copied over that comment to take a look back at when we're done recording. And again, this episode will probably wrap up a bit sooner than later. Mm. Just to make my way through all of your delicious comments. Uh, Sorrow Anime Manga says, Greetings, Mikey Mega Mega. Greetings, Sorrow Anime Manga. I wanted to ask if my comment... Uh, with a required hashtag to your competition is showing on your comment section. The reason I ask is because I seem to have been prob problems with my second channel and wanted to verify my comment and post if you're competition already. So basically, this comment doesn't have a hashtag on it, so I thought maybe it's not a bump harvest entry, but it's you just checking if you've got the hashtag on the bump harvest entries. Uh, and this particular comment didn't have a hashtag, Sora Anime Manga, but your other one, if it did, automatically got entered into competition. Because at the end, I did just uh, spend ages opening up the entire comment section to copy paste the entire lot and put it in a random uh, list generator to pick them winners uh, what else is going on 
Axio Watt says, Sup Mikey, hello Axio, how's life? When are you going to bring back the gaming? Maybe if you have a go at Telltale's The Walking Dead series, it's an emotional roller coaster. The game adapts for choices you make, making each playthrough unique and is relatively short. First game is the best, so if you're ever feeling up to it, definitely start there. Have fun and cry loads. Axio Watt, how are you doing? Uh, yeah, absolutely. So, um, well, let's have another sip of coffee. Like, I'm slowly waking up, like, I'm on a cusp of having to go to work. Oh, yeah, like, uh, do like to do the gaming, and the gaming uh, will continue on this channel in one format or another. And I was kind of thinking of it in two ways. Uh, well, probably three. One, it's not happening, like, any time in the next two weeks, because fuck my life, I'm so busy, and I've got this massive to-do list for film cram, and I'm still cramming down season uh, five Game of Thrones, as well as this channel, as well as trying to just get out of the house more and have a social life, <laughs> as well as a full-time job in an office. So it's a bit tight. Um, but yeah, man, like uh, I was thinking maybe I'll have a go at the live streaming. I don't know if it's on YouTube or if it's on Twitch. I don't know where the best place to do those things is. But live streaming some of the longer rambling games. Like I still haven't played the other two Mass Effect games because apparently no one wants to play the fourth one Andromeda. It's rubbish or something like that. Um, but some of the older PS3 catch-ups I'm doing, like there's RPGs in there and more Final Fantasy 15 and so on. Those I probably won't make. Uh, video shorts out of for YouTube. YouTube. Those I'll probably live stream on Twitch or on YouTube and just play. And anyone's welcome along uh, whenever I can fit it in. So it'll be a completely random element. And if I do it on Twitch, I guess it's not going to be something that kind of affects the channel because most people come to the channel to look at the art. But from time to time, especially with the scary video games, that's still something that's worth um, actually making like a little episode, like a half hour, 45 minute playthrough per episode with. So I will be coming back to those. Um, Telltale's The Walking Dead. Yeah, I'm not against the idea. I don't know what I think about games like that because I'm not much of a fan of, um, oh, what do you call it when like it's uh, there's like a live kind of in-game cutscene and you've got to tap X when it comes up on screen and you've got to press left when it comes up on screen and stuff like that. Uh, like Heavy Rain is one of these games. Just quick time events. There we go. A quick time event game. I'm not a massive fan of quick time event games. I don't think Heavy Rain I quite enjoyed because visually it had a really particular tone and the story was interesting and you had to find the clues or work out what you were gonna do. Um, but it wasn't a kind of game that really massively sucked me in either because it had that slower pace. Um, I found it sometimes a bit difficult to get fully immersed into the situation. So. It, I don't know what I'd think about a kind of more decision-based game like Telltale's The Walking Dead. Maybe it'll be good because I have played like um, proper old school text-based adventures back in the day on like a really old green and black screen Amstrad uh, that we used to have where you like press north, south, you know, pick up item, say this or that, you know. And so, uh, yeah, I'll be up for giving it a try at the very least. Axio, thank you very much. Um, Grady Rucker says, hey Mikey, hello Grady, you're awesome by the way, thank you very much, I just finished up your REM and RAM tutorial, awesome job, I really like your videos and just wanted to let you know that you have people who wait patiently for your next episode. upload, love you Mikey, <laughs> thank you very much Grady Rucker, that's a lovely comment to read in between all of these bumper harvest entry uh, competitions, how kind of you, uh, yeah, so like, um, hmm, more coffee, so it's not so regular now because to be fair, it makes things a bit more interesting if I mix it up. But if the vague, vague game plan of a channel is that the midweek series is this, a DWM where it's casual and we just chat and catch up. And the weekend part of the channel is usually either a piece of fan art or a drawing tutorial or something. Then the Monday slot is the one I'm trying to kind of mix around. Monday slots used to just be draw simple, easy episodes. So they're not like the other tutorials. They're not like the other fan arts. It's a really set picture. It's usually a really common picture of um, a particular character from the internet. And I just sit down and I teach you how to draw that picture, how to measure it out and what you're looking for and so on. So it's less loose, it's less flowing, it's less stylized. And that's the point of Draw Simple Easy because it's just using a framework and a building process to get to a particular image. That's its kind of function. It's less casual. Um, so it has a bit of a different vibe to it. And it means that you can kind of work your way through loads of different characters. I've done loads of um, Hunter Hunter characters, for example, and stuff like that. And I'm really glad you enjoyed it. And it's got their own vibe. But some people kind of get confused because they sometimes are just like, especially new viewers, are just like, oh, is this a fan art Friday or something? Because the drawing's much simpler. It's not his best work. And it's not supposed to be. It's supposed to be 
like a very particular type of image and ideally simple and easier so that anyone can have a go at it not trying to show off there trying to make drawing more accessible basically to um beginners just so they can kind of tackle something ever so slightly juicy um so i'm glad you enjoyed that we will have more in the future it used to be every monday and what I do now is like, because now people are sending me tablets to review, which is fucking awesome. Um, although also actually a lot of work to make those videos. It's not easy. Um, so sometimes on Monday's fat, sometimes it's like a catch up video. I did like a manga room tour sort of thing or manga collection tour. Sometimes it's also a DWM and sometimes it's a sketchbook catch up with like time lapse and all sorts of bits. So Monday's now like a bit more of a, a loose slot just to kind of keep things interesting and do a few slightly different things on the channel. Not loads, but a few slightly different ones. Thank you. However, for following along, it's greatly appreciated. So how are we doing? Let's have a quick scroll further through these comments. They're mostly bumper harvest ones. Every now and then I see one. Read more. Nope, that's got loads of bumper harvest stuff. That's just an entry and then read more. And then read more. Okay, uh, Tyrell676 or Tyrell. Hey there, Mikey. Hello, Tyrell. Love your videos. They're perfect to have running in the background whilst I work on my graphic novels and try to actually finish one of them. Oh, very good. Good, sir. Very, very good. Um, I'm assuming at this part of the recording, them thighs are nearly done or we've gotten to a part where I've scanned them into the computer or summit. Uh, yeah, I easily get distracted and start working on something else. Anyway, keep up the great videos. Thank you for being a good source of inspiration and motivation. Anime I watched when I'm younger got me into anime were Dragon Ball, Dragon Ball Z, Berserk, Ninja Scroll, Ghost in the Shell. Mate, that's such a powerful collection. <laughs> Excellent. Project Aiko, Agent Ica, Golden Boy, Akira, Cowboy Bebop, Outlaw Star, Excel Saga, Dominion Tank Police, and New Dominion Tank Police. Fucking hell. What a fucking selection. That's like most of these I've like uh, read of I've been growing up or watched as I've been growing up. That's an excellent group, Terrell. I again I randomly assume you're in your like early to mid 30s, late 20s or something like that just by that selection alone. Excellent. Um, oh, yeah. The anime you were talking about is probably Ergo Proxy. Oh, shit. Yeah. Like uh, what are we talking about? Oh, yeah. So we were talking about like um, I'm going to have to make like I think a question at the top of this video and I'll probably just rehash whatever question I asked last time, which was I think what anime surprisingly disappointed you the most when you were trying to watch it and you expected it to be fine. Uh, and I think another question I asked was like, what was the first anime that really like kicked off anime for you? Um, I'll try to make that into the title. I'm probably going to have to wrap up soon, so I will make that in and actually remember this time. But dude, Terrell, yeah, like uh. Uh, same for loads of these like some of the anime you've mentioned there are absolute fucking classics but i was mentioning but there's an anime i couldn't quite remember the name of and i was so nonplussed by it but by the time i reached episode 25 or whatever of a 26 episode series you know episode 23 of 24 or whatever it was um i my last episode was corrupted and i couldn't watch that last um, episode and i cared so little about what was going on i was just like fuck it i'm done I just never went back to it. Like, I remember it being clever and it quoting, like, loads of stuff, but I just didn't fucking care enough. Um, mate, we've talked about this before, but, like, Ninja Scroll, Ghost in the Shell, and Akira are, like, the three pillars of um, anime under the manga-branded title that made its way over to the West to our culture and really kick-started shit off in the late 90s. Obviously, it was coming over and available long before then, but in the days of going to your video store, and picking out a video cassette and hoping one of them might be a Japanese cartoon. Those were the fucking days. And loads of the other ones are real, like, retro 80s manga things. I used to have this little uh, pamphlet that covered loads of, like, early 90s, late 80s releases under the manga titles. And, uh, mate, it was, half of it was pretty much the list that you've just described. Excellent suggestions, Terrell. They were very good. Um, so, yeah, what's going on? I think, like, a sip of coffee. I think, again, this episode's just going to be a bit shorter because scrolling through your comments again, it's just been hijacked by that competition. It's fine because we're giving stuff away. I like it. Um, but I think I'll just kind of have to kind of reset it there. So I appreciate loads of the usual crowd um, have probably commented in the comments section and just had something to say. And I've just had to miss it um, because you're hidden amongst 2,700 other comments. <laughs> So uh, basically, like, if you guys have commented in the last episode, which was a couple weeks ago, um, copy paste that comment or just pop it again in the comment section of this episode below. Let me know how you're getting on. Um, and yeah, the overall themed question uh, is what anime or manga 
did you first watch that like really kicked things off and made you think fuck what is this this new art style i've never seen before it's different from western comics i'm really into anime and manga now i'm going to start you know researching this or looking for more of the same what were those first ones that really got your juices flowing they don't necessarily have to be your favorites and um, they don't necessarily have to be um, something you even think was any good but as a kid or even recently as an adult you watched it and just thought oh shit i'm gonna give this anime stuff a try what were those first early entries and of course if you've commented anything else in the comment section um, which i just haven't read and it's worth me having a check um, then type it up again in the bottom of this episode and we'll get rolling back into the more traditional formats and if anything um I will have just we'll have less comments starting off again. I'll be able to definitely read all of them as we roll back into hopefully the usual game plan. We'll see how this goes. So as ever, you lovely people, thank you so much for watching along. Um, thanks to everybody. I mean, I mentioned this on the Monday video, but thanks to everybody who got involved in the last episode, got into the comments, and did enter that competition. Really appreciate it. Um, the response to it was fucking mental it was way 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 more than i'd actually expected uh which is great and i will probably be doing some more giveaways in the future because like i say i'm getting sent tablets now to review which is great um and some of them are awesome and i might hold on to them or have one or two as a backup but i'm not going to hold on to all of them because they're just taking up space in boxes so i'm probably gonna have to like take them down to the post office and um get some prices for shipping internationally like around the world and uh, yeah do some more competitions in the future and actually start giving some of these touchscreen tablets and some other bits away because uh we're entering competition time why the fuck not it would be nice to do a couple before christmas i think let me know what your thoughts are on that um i will do a separate video i won't like link it into a dwm so but everything's nice and neat on the channel um but yeah watch this space for that uh of course, thanks for entering, thanks for subscribing and all of that stuff. Um, but an extra great big thank you to all of those lovely patrons on Patreon because obviously uh, you guys, even with the tiniest amount of support, make all of this possible. Otherwise, it wouldn't be happening these days. So that is freaking awesome. And an extra great big thank you to Michael S, Quay Joseph, Alvin R, Hans N, ICZ, The Clamps, Trent H, Wesby, Julio Felix O, James S, Christian L, Gabriel R, Adam T, and Jeff G, you guys are bloody awesome. Thanks for sponsoring things along. And as ever, have a lovely week, guys. Tell me about your first anime experiences or the first ones that kicked it off. And I'll see you next time. Take care.